it. All right, I'm gonna spend a little time showing you uh, a few ways to actually create a few variables and then estimate um, models um, using a few different techniques other than simple regression analysis. Uh, first thing I'd like to show you is how to create a set of dummy variables from um, one variable that you may need to turn into multiple dummy variables. Um, I'm using some data that uh, Ben and I have worked with in the past. Um, so lots and lots of variables and uh, some pretty easy examples for us to use here. Okay. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do again is create dummy variables. The command you would use to create a set of dummy variables is xi i dot and then the variable name that you want to turn into the set of dummy variables. So for example this is education data and it includes a variable um, for the school district that the school is located in. Um, so in this case I would call that district um, underscore id because that's the variable name that variable that I put in there, whatever is the variable name for me, whatever the variable name for you is, that's what you want to put there. Hit enter and that's going to take a little bit of time to run. Uh, when it finishes running, it's going to tell you that it created a set of dummy variables. It'll tell you what the omitted dummy variable is. And then you can see the list of variables uh, over here in your list of variables that will be at the bottom uh, as soon as it finishes running. And there it went. So this is the set of variables. So what it's done is it's created a dummy variable for each district. So now I actually have a set of dummy variables, uh, one for each district, with the omitted variable being the 601 school district. Okay. Now, um, the variable names are kind of messy. If you would like to have them be neater, you'll actually have to go through and rename those variables. Um, not really a big deal, but make sure you understand what those variables are uh, and make sure you explain to me what they are if you report them uh, in a paper that you do for me. Okay. The next command I'm going to show you uh, is used primarily for panel data um, uh, when you want to use fixed effects. Now, you can also do random effects, of course, but uh, this is primarily going to be used for fixed effects. So uh, the command there is areg. So areg um, is what you're going to use when you want to use uh, individual level or school level or whatever level fixed effects. Uh, I've got um, some familiarity with this data, so I'm just going to make up a regression here quickly uh, and show you how to use that command. So areg, and then this is your dependent variable. In my case, it is a scale score variable. It's just an EOCT score for economics. And then I'm going to put a couple of independent variables in there. Um, just simple for this simple example, one of those is algebra scale score and one is geometry scale score. And then you put a comma and then A, open parentheses, and then the name of the variable you want to use as your fixed effect variable. In my case, I'm going to be using a teacher ID number, a teacher serial number, uh, which is up at the very top here of my variable list. Uh, you can click the little arrow here to add that variable to your regression if you'd like, or you can simply type it in. Make sure you close the parentheses and then hit enter. So what it's done is it's run a linear regression with teacher level fixed effects. It gives me the coefficients, of course, the standard errors and so forth. Uh, and then it tells me at the bottom that uh, those fixed effects are in there and it actually performs an F test to see if that set of fixed effects was statistically significant. In this case, it was. So that's how you use an AREG command and that's essentially how you interpret it. The next command I'm gonna show you is an instrumental variables command. Um, which um, we've talked about is a method that you use, or if we haven't talked about it yet, we will in class, uh, is a method you use when you feel there's an endogeneity issue, simultaneity, um, maybe an omitted, omitted variable bias or some measurement error, depending, there's lots of different ways you might want to use instrumental variables. Um, you find the variable you'd like to replace and you find a variable that you think can replace it that meets the requirements that we've talked about in class. Uh, I'm going to make up a simple example here. This is not a very good example. Um, but it's just a very simple one for you to see how the command works. So the command to run an instrumental variables regression is IV reg all together, and then the dependent variable, which I'm just going to use scale score again, and then some independent variable, which in this case I'm just going to use female, uh, and then open parentheses, then the variable that you want to instrument for is listed first, so the endogenous variable. I'm going to use algebra scale score here, even though there's no endogeneity concern really. Uh, and then what you're going to uh, instrument with um, is the second thing you put inside the parentheses, so the equal sign, and then geo scale score. So that is your instrument. In this case, geometry scale score is my instrument. And then I always put the comma first at the end of that command because what that does is when I hit enter, it gives me the first stage of the instrumental variables analysis and then the second stage of the instrumental variables analysis. 
So this tells me how well that geometry scale score variable works as a predictor of algebra scale score, and that is one beautifully large t-stat in this fake scenario. Um, and you can also use the R-square, and we talked about how you interpret these things in this setting. Um, but you want to see that first stage so you can determine if it's uh, actually working as an instrument. And then the second stage gives you the instrumental variables analysis estimates of coefficients and so forth and so on. Again, as we talked about in class. Uh, the last thing I want to show you today, although we may record some of these in the future, this may well be the last. Uh, but the last thing for now that I'm going to show you is the probit command. Uh, you can also use a logic command. We've talked about when you would use each. Uh, if it's important, if it's not, then don't worry about it. Um, um, when you have a dummy dependent variable or a binary dependent variable, a zero one variable, that is when the probit of the logit uh, is necessary. I'm going to show you probit easily, uh, quickly here. Uh, again, logit is a very similar command. So probit, uh, I'm just going to use female as the dependent variable because I know it's a zero one variable, even though um, you would basically never use that as a dependent variable or typically not use that as a dependent variable. And then uh, as an independent variable, I'm just going to use geo scale score. It doesn't really matter. So then you run your probit. It takes its iterations to try to get things to converge, and you get your estimates and a pseudo r square, which is not that that the beginning issue. But there are your results. So that's how you run a probit and a logit. The same type of command, so if you use logit instead of probit, uh, instrumental variables, uh, a fixed effect model, and how to create a set of dummy variables. Uh, I may get to do something like this for some time series if there's any demand for it. Um, but for now, there you go.